Emmett Sperling, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Sam Sadri of QP Technologies, going to talk today about open cavity plastic packaging. Sam, this technology has been around for a long time. What's changing now? Why is it suddenly so popular? When I first started here, I noticed uh, just looking, you know, with my sales background, just looking at uh, the trend of different areas uh, of our packaging area, I noticed a downward trend when it comes to open cavity. Like the open cavity package is, I guess, similar to buying a used car you know, uh, is the used car is going to be reliable. So, and there was no data basically available. So I did some um, uh, work with a few customers and developed some, you know, re reliability data and uh, put it out there. So now people are, uh, customers are more interested. And there's also more obsolescence that's coming out these, these days that uh, again, makes this technology very attractive. Let's dig into this. Sure. So Sam, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking in the fact that uh, we can really start with any plastic package. Now, this could be a test reject. Uh, when our customers test packages, they do functional testing, at speed testing, and even at 99, 98% test yield, there's going to be, because they're testing millions of parts, there's going to be thousands of parts that fail testing. So that is one source for these plastic packages. The other one is excess inventory. You have, uh, you know, you always build extra, so you just excess inventory. The other type is mechanical, mechanical samples. What does that mean? You know, when you do, for example, molding of a package, you run it first without any dye to make sure plastic is uh, proper. Everything works well. There's not too much warpage. So you ended up, again, building a lot of parts without any dye in it with just, just the plastic. And so what we do here at Quick Pack, we acquire those packages, either customers send it to us, or we have sources that we acquire them. And then using our proprietary technology, we basically, we open them, we bring them down, you know, to dye level, we remove the dye and get to bare package, bare bone package, the skeleton. And uh, now this is ready for assembly. So that's where we start. And so the goal here really is to be able to say, this already fits in the slot. We know it works here, but we have to update it and keep it current with whatever the latest technology is, right? That's a very good example. It gets smaller, it gets denser, but that doesn't necessarily mean you cannot use the existing package, the existing footprint. How many different packages are there here? What kinds are there? So looking at the very top left side, we're looking at a at a co-op package that's been opened up. You can see where the die attached area is. Next to it is another co-op package that's an MQFT. It's just more rectangular. Um, next to it is a TSOP that's a small outline package. And then you have a side brace next to it. Uh, this covers all the top rows. On the bottom row, again, another type of uh, package that has two sides, dual in line. Um, another TQFP, that's a thin uh, outline um, co-op flat pack, and so on and so forth. Or there are so many, and that is actually one of the problems, and that's why this technology is so, so, so interesting, is that there are so many footprints out there, and, and a lot of them are already obsolete. So imagine going back and rehash all that, and that takes time. And, and resources. So what does this actually look like when you actually replace the, the die that's in there? You see on the top row, you see three packages. The first one, these are all after we opened up, um, open them up. On the very left, you see just a bare bone package, you know, without any cover, you know, we use die attached water bond. As you can see in the center, you see the copper, that's the red color, that's, that's the copper, uh, which is the best thermal conductor, you know, and uh, very low cost, very cost effective. There's just die attached water bond, nothing else. Next to it, you see um, that same package, but imagine this was an uh, optical package, so you need, to protect it, you need to protect your die from mechanical for somebody like me sticking their finger and touching the die. So by putting in capsulin, you protect it uh, from, from mechanical damage. And because it's clear, then it's good for optical. Uh, next to it, you see one with glass lead. Sometimes the index of refraction on, globed, you know, on, a, on a clear encapsulant versus glass are different. 
So a customer has preference to use glass. That's what it looks like. On the bottom, you see tree with glob top. Um, sometimes we do just cover the outside wires. So again, optical chip, you know, exposed. Uh, sometimes it's just for mechanical protection and it's black, you know, it's all black, um, standard glob top black. And then finally, you see what's molded, uh, molded and, and, and flattened. So it looks, and those are the ones that you can hardly tell the difference between if this was a brand new package or a OC, OCPP process. You can almost not tell by looking at it. So is the goal here to be able to update these chips? Is it to be able to leverage the what you've already designed in? Really what you're trying to do here is get around obsolescence, right? That is certainly one of the one of the reasons why uh, you know people use this type of technology, but not limited only to obsolescence. And I, I'll talk about a few uh, few cases where one was an obsolescence, the other one started in an obsolescence. But you see why we went to this technology. It was a short term obsolescence and long term the real solution came aboard. Uh, downtown San Diego, across from Coronado, uh, you see a lot of um, battleships. That's where they, uh, they, they're stationed. And typically you see them in the, for a week or so, and then later they, they leave and another one uh, comes. So you don't get to see them a long time. And imagine one of them, you just keep on seeing there all over and over again, uh, week after week. This was an obs you know, obsolescent issue. There's, there was a component in there, uh, this battleship will not leave the dock unless everything kosher, everything works well, you know, all the systems talk to each other. But just imagine one single component, a part of the radar, for, for example. We troubleshoot, find out exactly what's wrong, which component, but that component is from 30, 40 years ago. It's a technology that's no longer uh, even available. Where you can't just remove one component and put a much, you know, speed higher speed component in there is just going to just mess, mess all the signals. So you need to match that ex, not only the exact footprint, but also the, the functionality of that device. Um, so we were able to redesign the, and the functionality, but the package itself was no longer available. So imagine again, removing the same package and finding the same, same footprint, but on some test rejects that, uh, that somebody bought many years ago and store it the hope that one day he can sell these mechanical parts. So we get our hand on those packages, open them up and drop our design in there, close it and you know, now battleship can leave the dock. What is the, what are the other reasons for doing this? Again, imagine a package was meant, you know, was built uh, for a customer and, um, and the company who made it here in the U.S. went out of business. So all the tools and all the things that, you know, used to to, to build that package was, uh, was lost and, and the customer never really knew it fast enough to get it back from them. And even if you get all the tooling, not always do they match to our, our tool set. Um, it's not, it's not a one-to-one -one. Now there's a customer that requires thousands of these and even willing to pay to redesign the whole package. Um, now redesigning this whole package in elite frame format takes, um, takes you know, about 12 to 14 weeks. Uh, so in the interim, um, what this customer did is use this OCPP open cavity plastic packaging to, to open uh, packages and drop their dye in there and encapsulate while they're waiting to redesign it from scratch from lead frame. So in that 12 week period that took us to, to redesign it uh, to its original uh, footprint, we were able to acquire um, these old packages. And again, using the process, OCPP process, open them and, and drop the new the dye in there, close it. I, even I can't tell the difference between the two. So how reliable are these compared to the original ones? You no, know, together with our customer, uh, not we only build it, but we run them through a lot of reliability studies. And I, I'm presenting part of what we did here on the very uh, right 
top hand side, you see the mechanical things we did. So we basically, we opened up the packages, built a few and did sheer warpool to assure that, um, you know, it's as good as if this was fresh. And you can see by data what's allowed, you know, for example, for that size die, you gotta have today's standard says only two, you gotta have minimum of two and a half kilogram of shear. That's when you shear the die. That's when you uh, break it basically and see how much force does it take to break that die. A standard says you got to have at least two and a half kilogram and our findings were 12 to 27 kilograms. So certainly, you know, over and above what standard calls for. Um, also, water bonding is uh, another uh, process that you need to be make sure that it's, it's good and reliable. And um, again, standard allows a minimum of say four gram for one mil go wire and these things were you know, running seven to 14 grams. So again, um, you know, well within and above what the standard allows. So once we were done with mechanically building these and shearing, then and molding in, you know, what's going on inside that is, are there any, because again, these are packages that's already been used and not being reclaimed. Just the surface create any oxidation that, you know, copper, is that going to affect how well the mold sticks to the copper? So we ran what CSAM, which is a basically acoustically, uh, you look at inside the mold and if there's any holes or or voids, you know, the, it will show. You look inside the package and see what was going on inside the package. So those are some of the, um, uh, the mechanical studies we did here. And then our customers run them through uh, what, what, what you see here again on the, on the left-hand side of the slide, you know, electrical verification, uh, you know, they need to test it to make sure that electrically they're test, uh, you know, they test well. And then they do all all kinds of um, what what we call shake rather than roll. Um, just just you know do a lot of burning, a lot of high temperature, um, accelerated uh, you know uh, stress tests, accelerated rife tests. Basically put them at high temperature, you know 150, and turn on off on off the device. You know, so if there's any infant mortality or what we call infant mortality, there's always some devices that will fail. Um, get those out so what's left is cream of the crop. This is interesting technology, Sam, but is it primarily for mill aero and industrial where they tend to keep their product lines running for 40, 50 years, or is it something else where it's going into commercial and it may be a matter of five years and something's not made anymore? But no, not necessarily. We use this technology for uh, medical, commercial, you know, commercial market, uh, you know, phone, um, uh, any really any any market can you know this is where where you cannot find the package or certain footprint um, not necessarily military but any market can can use this technology and that varies anywhere from military to commercial and uh, industrial um, power sometimes you know we do a lot of these kind of work with TO type packages those are transistor outline those are power products you know, when you make a power supply DC to AC, AC to DC, nowadays in automotive, you know, inverters, you know, you can really use it for any, any take and any, any industry. Sam Sadri, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.